Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This is History of Power Rangers Season 1, Episode 10 of my show, but this is going to be about Episode 9. Now, Episode 9 in the, in the original Power Rangers TV series, first season, is called For Whom the Bell Trolls. Um, and also, before I start talking about this video, uh, we're in April right now, so before I actually start talking about this actual episode, I just want to make a little, uh, minor announcement. Um, uh, next month on the 13th of May, it's going to be my, uh, four year anniversary with my YouTube channel. So I'm probably going to be doing a couple of videos over the next, in the next month because of that in celebration of it and and also Injustice 2 is going to be released for the Xbox One PS4 that's kind of the reason I wanted to get the Xbox One in the first place uh, because um, if I didn't I wouldn't be able to play Injustice 2 and I really did um, I just I wanted to get a little bit of personal information out of the way all oh, and one more little thing before I actually start talking about this video, um, since it's going to be my four year, um, anniversary, I'm, and since it's on a weekend day, I might try to upload multiple videos, um, on my anniversary itself, um, like in the evening and stuff, I just thought I'd get that out of the way. Uh, I just wanted to get a little bit of personal information out of the way there before I actually started talking about uh, today's video. Now this video is going to count uh, as the first one for this week. The second one will probably be either Friday or Saturday, whichever of those two. I, I, ju I just wanted to get that out of the way there. And one last, and now I'm going to actually start talking about the actual episode. Uh, this is History of Power Rangers Season 1, Episode 10 of my show, but this is about Episode 9. Now, Episode 9 in the original Power Rangers series is known as For Whom the Bell Trolls. Um, but before I actually start talking about it again, I just want to mention one more thing off the top. Um, this episode is technically, I should say, it's one of two episodes in the early segment of Power Rangers um where uh, one of the Rangers will have a will be in a dream state. I just thought I'd get that out of the way. I won't uh, tell you which what the second episode is until I get to the series that comes with that episode. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Anyway, the way this episode starts off is basically, you see in this episode, it's, uh, Hobby Week at, um, the Angel Grove High School, so, in, uh, Miss Appleby's class in the episode, and training volunteers to show her their collection of dolls to start off, and... She says about the different cultures of the world, and then she tells her her fa she tells the class her favorite one is a a doll like a troll like doll named Mister Tickle Sneezer. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, the reason why it's her favorite is because apparently in the episode it belonged to her mother when she was a little girl and stuff, and it's it, apparently there's a legend about the doll that he has his own special powers, um, where he could collect things and gather them up and put them in a magical bottle, which, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's kind of hilarious, he could gather them up and put them in a magical bottle, <laughs> oh, I gotta laugh about that, guys, I'm sorry, it's kind of hilarious, <laughs> Anyway, continuing on with what I was saying, uh, then it goes into where Rita's pal is, and she's like, Ugh, I never got to play with dolls when I was a little girl. 
Who had the time? I had to learn evil spells and how to be bad while she played with dolls all day. That treaty has had it! And, um, basically, um, afterward, <laughs> Kimberly said that she's always been interested in gymnastics and she wanted to show them a simple handstand. And, uh, Jason basically he, uh, showed them his hobby, which is the karate thing, and then, um, Basically, um, what happens is then Billy explains that his homemade volcano will demonstrate how lava erupts from the volcano by causing a simulated eruption and stuff. And then basically, what happens is, um, after that, uh, Mrs. Appleby says that, um, uh, it's very nice. And then the bell rings, and then they s said that, she says that they'll continue with Hobby Week tomorrow, and remember to, uh, read chapter, one of the chapters in their English books about question marks, why do they need them, and then, uh, Balkan Skull sort of caused a tiny bit of a ruckus with the, the Mickle, the, with the Mr. Tickle Sneezer doll, and that, then, but then after Trini catches it, uh, they manage to, um, I don't know, and then, and then, it, um, goes into where Trini's in her house, and basically what happens is she puts all her dolls the way she said that they had a long day, and then she starts yawning, and then she said that she had a long day. <laughs> <laughs> and then basically what happens after that is when she goes to sleep after putting Mr. Tickle Sneezer on her nightstand. <laughs> oh my god. Then we just like, so she's fun of that Tickle Sneezer doll. She just wait till I get through with him. And then Squat's wondering what he should do. What is what is he to do? And then Gold tells him. Babbling and go get that doll! <laughs> oh, I am sorry, but that's kind of hilarious. So he goes to Trini's house and he uses this device to make Tickle Sneezer life size. And this is a theory I have. You remember when I said when I started this video that the rest of what's gonna happen is gonna sort of be in a dream state? Now, I think this is technically. The part where the dream state part of it begins. Uh, so basically when Squat's in in the um in the Trini's house, he uses the device to make Tickle Sneezer life size, and then they go back to Rita's palace on the moon and Rita's like Rita's telling Tickle Sneezer to stand still and then Tickle Sneezer is basically saying that he's just kind of nervous. It's kind of weird being alive and all. And then she's like, perhaps you'd like me to change you back. And then he, hey, hey, don't get him wrong, he likes it. And then she's looking at this book of legends that she has. He said that, because according to it, Mr. Tickle Sneezer has special powers that could be abused to her. What can he do? And basically, this also goes into what I explained with Trini's character again. Um, he has this magical bottle, which he can use to collect things. And then Babu basically says that he can, there's a whole world of things for him to collect. And, and the Power Rangers could be part of his collection. <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry, but that's a little hilarious. <laughs> anyway, continuing on with what I was saying, Ben is like, My friend to Earth, you will go with your bottle and toe when I command you. You shall obey. And then basically, 
Uh, Trini basically is helping, uh, is asking Billy to help her retrace her steps because she, she could have sworn that Mr. Tickle Sneezer was on her nightstand. And then basically, um, they continue looking for him. And, but while they're looking, Mr. Tickle Sneezer is, uh, collecting things using its goodie bottle. And, um, then Trini said that Tickle Sneezer wasn't at school, he wasn't at the youth center, and then Billy said that he doesn't want to accuse anybody, but maybe Mr. Tickle, somebody stole Mr. Tickle Sneezer, which technically is kind of right, uh, technically, because Rita sent, well, Goldar sent Squat down to use a device to make Tickle Sneezer, Sneezer life-size, like, live, basically, so... In a sense, I guess you could kind of consider it that way. And then they get collected in the, his car. They, then he sees the car and then he uses his goodie bottle to collect them. And then after he collects the car, he finds out that there's other little goodies inside. And then they, Billy and Trini start freaking out, and then basically what happens after that is, um, Billy thinks that Mr. Tickle Sneeze is gonna crush them, but he says he doesn't want to hurt them, just add them to his collection. He's there, they're his now, his forever, just like all of his goodies, and then basically what happens is, um, afterward, um, it goes into the scene where Jason, Zach, and Kimberly are in the youth center, and their communicators beep, and then basically what happens is, after that, basically what happens is, um, when they teleport to the command center, Zordon tells them the situation about how um, Rita has Tickle Sneezer under his spell, and now Billy and Trina have fallen into a trap. And then he tells. Then Zach looks at the viewing globe and he says that Mr. Tickle Sneezer is gathering up everything in sight, and then. Basically, what happens is after that, um, um, Zordon tells them that Rita has already sent down a small platoon of putties to protect Tickle Sneezer, and basically, Zack said that they'll get through them, but then, uh, he's also, then Zordon's also telling, uh, Kimberly, Zack, and Jason that, uh, she, She's also sent down Goldar, Squat, and Babu, and then, <laughs> and then basically what happens is Kimberly says that they're gonna morph, so they do, and they start fighting the Tickle Sneezer, and then they um, manage to. Uh, well, first they start fighting Goldar, and afterward they fight Tickle Sneezer a little bit, and then they break his bottle, and then, and then Kimberly and Trini managed, I mean, uh, Trini and Billy managed to escape, so they morph as well to help fight, and then, um, basically, um, basically what happens is, then Tickle Sneezer is wondering where his bottle went because he's still got a lot of collecting to do. And then Rita shows up and then she tells him that he's his co he's her collector and he, now he'll collect the Power Rangers. And basically he said that he can't. He knows that he's uh, got to do whatever she says, but he doesn't have his bottle anymore. And so then she uses her magic wand to make him grow and then... They start uh, fighting Tickle Sneezer, but when they fight him in the Megazord, he collects them, but then they use the Power Sword to um, 
break free of the bottle, and he said that it it, it back because he's gonna collect things for him for Rita, and then the, Trini said that it's time to give Rita a taste of her own medicine. You think that? Uh, well, first Zach says that the first thing that they gotta do is get that bottle away from Tickle Sneezer, which I'm just backtracking here because I'm kind of getting close to the end of the episode. And and then, like I said, after they get captured, they use the power sword to escape, and then and then they grab Tickle Sneezer's bottle and they uh, threaten Rita to release Tickle Sneezer from her spell. Um, other, or they'll bottle her up forever. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry, but that's kind of hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's hilarious. They'll bottle her up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's kind of hilarious, though. Anyway, continuing on with what I was saying. <sighs> After they try to bottle her, uh, she and her minions escape, uh, but then, but before she escaped, that she, she said, Great Galaxy Dead! I'll be gone, but I'll be coming back! And then Zordon basically says that they must make sure that all the things the doll took are returned back to their proper place and time. And then Alpha's wondering what makes him so sure that the doll can be what he's taken back. And he, Zordon says that Tickle Sneezer has goodness in his heart and he never meant to hurt anyone, which is kind of true. And then the Rangers tell him that they that he got that he's got to return everything now before he gets hurt, before he hurts someone. And then basically he says that he doesn't want to hurt anyone honest. And then basically what happens after that is Trini keeps saying, give it all back. And then it goes into back where she's asleep. And then she wakes up. And then she uh, says that she must be dreaming. Then she looks at her nightstand and she sees Tickle Sneezes that n not there. So she kind of starts freaking out. But then she looks on the floor and she realizes that Tickle Sneezes is on the floor. And... He, she said that he's back, and he's okay, he's still there, and she also says that she's definitely got too much Rita on her mind. <laughs> oh my god. And then it goes into uh, sort of the final scene of the episode where they're back at the school, and um, basically what happens is they're back at the school, and uh, Miss Appleby says that they have one more... Pro, uh, presentation to complete high every week. Uh, now this is gonna, this episode is also significant where we also learn Bulk and Skull's first names. Bulk's first name is Fargus and Skull's is Eugene. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry, that's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Fargus and Eugene. <laughs> Anyway, continuing on, uh, Bulk says that they like parasites, and <laughs> and then Skull basically repeats them, and they, Bulk says that they collect fleas off the stray dogs in the neighborhood, and he pulls this um, uh, tarp off, and he <laughs> reveals what they use with the fleas for is a flea circus, but then Bulk realizes that the fleas aren't there, so he has Skull where they are, <laughs> and then it, this is the Part. The fleas are actually on Mrs. Appleby, which is causing her to scratch herself a bit. <laughs> and that's basically where this episode stops, guys. <laughs> so if you guys like this video when I post it, um, I'll try to post it um, on sometime tomorrow. So, um, actually... I'll try to post it tonight since I'm not going to be able to record a video or upload it this one tomorrow. So I'm going to upload this tonight and hopefully it's up the same day. So until um, later on this week, guys, like I always tell you with this series, may the power protect you always.